Rodriguez, a little Chris in the hood. Anyway, Pastor Chris Rodriguez, and I am grateful that all of you have entrusted your hearts and your minds to the word that's taught here at Twin City Community Church. Amen. Father, we thank you for everyone that's here. I really do. I'm humbled by you even choosing to come here and to park on the side of the road and to get out of your car and to come up the driveway and to come through the front door. I'm really humbled by that. We're blessed by that. I surely am. That's for sure. As a parent, it's hard just to get your children to listen and then to get a group of people in the community to come and listen. That's a big deal. I don't know if you know that, but that's a big deal. Amen. Really is a big deal to me, and I'm grateful for it. Thank God. So once again, welcome to Twin City Community Church. Look at this here. Don't forget, we got the new app. You can get that app put on your phone. You know what I'm talking about? And you can go everywhere. If you have some issues with it, just talk to me. I'll teach you how to use it. But it's pretty pretty simple. The developers developed it. I mean, they didn't take their time on it. They, uh, in the, I mean, they didn't rush on it. They took their time on it in the sense of how they put it together. And I was pleased with it. And we have access to change it in any way we want to. So keep that in mind right there. Um, but before we do continue uh, and go further, y'all need to pray for the family of Amelda. She came to visit us on and off. She would come in season and she would visit. And many times I spoke with her and ministered to her. Sometimes at two, three, four in the morning, sometimes five, six in the morning, sometimes just randomly in the day because the devil was out there to kill, steal and destroy. And her life has been taken. It's gone. And we're hoping and believing because of what she heard, because of what she professed. We're hoping and believing that she's in the presence of the Lord as we speak. Amen. Her children, four of them, have been left behind. We will not abandon them. We will do what we can to reach out to them, to get them to come and learn God's word and to stay connected. We'll be, my wife and I will be donating our van to the church, and we'll be using that van to pick people up because there's people who really want to come and need to come. They just don't have a way to come. Amen? Amen. And so y'all keep that family in prayer. I'm sure many of y'all remember her on Thursday, Thursday nights, especially when she would come. And if, if you don't have an opportunity to get in God's word as much as God needs you to get in the word in order for you to get to where he wants you to be, where he can corral you to protect you, not only from the enemy, but also from within ourselves. If you have that opportunity to come and grow with God, you need to take advantage of that opportunity. Because the more we grow in God, the stronger yes. we become. And the stronger we acknowledge God is. You don't know how strong God is if you don't know God that well. The more you know him, the stronger he becomes to you. Amen. Look at the song that we just sang. You know, I'm going to see a victory for the battle belongs to the Lord. You got to keep that on your mind. That no matter what you're going through, everything that you face, all the challenges in, that come in your life. Parents, you can look at your children. Turn to look at your children if they're here with you and know that what the enemy meant for evil, God has turned it for good. If you're here to hear the word of God, it's because God has turned it for good. Amen. You could be out doing things that you shouldn't be doing and your children never hear the word of God. Amen. But what the enemy meant for evil, God turned it for good. Amen. Think of that. You got to be grateful for that. You got to praise God for that. If you ever wonder, like, I don't know how to pray. I don't really have, you know, prayed. Even if I ask you to pray for the food, if you don't pray for the food, at least say, God, we thank you for everything you're doing in our life. We thank you that you've led us to you. We thank you that our children are healed and that they're in your presence and they're being raised in your word. We're grateful for that. I wouldn't care if you prayed for the enchiladas or not, as long as you acknowledge how grateful you should be for all the goodness that that God has showed you. Amen. Amen. I take what the enemy meant for evil, he says, and turns it for good. Can you can you really just fathom that real quick? I mean, the battle. Why, though? Because the battle belongs to the Lord. It doesn't belong to you. It belongs to the Lord. When you're going through anything, you must know that the battle belongs to the Lord. Listen, the reason we sang it twice was because of the fact that when you're in school and you don't get it the first time, when the teacher tells you, I will not talk. How many times did they make you write it in school? About a hundred times. I will not talk. I will not talk. I will not talk. It's important 
As an adult who's used to having control in your life, who manages your own money, or as an adult who goes to work and you manage your children and your household, it's important for you to know that no matter how much you can manage these earthly things, there are some things in the spirit that you just cannot control and only God can control that. Amen. Amen. You must know that. Therefore, we say it again so you know that whatever the enemy meant for evil, God turned it for good. You also need to remember that the reason you've got victory and I'm going to see a victory or not, I might, I may, chance I can see. The reason you're going to see a victory is because God is the one. The battle belongs to him. Amen. Amen. You should immediately turn to that. But your mind sometimes will go in the other direction. But you need to immediately say, forget that. God is in control. God is going to make this turn around. I know what it looks like. I know what it feels like. And I know what everyone's saying and seeing. But I know what I believe. I believe in God who has the victory. Amen? Amen. You got to think that way. Don't forget it. Or we'll sing it again and again today. If that's all you hear today, that's all you really need to know. Because you can walk out of here knowing that you got the victory because the battle belongs to the Lord. You've won already. Amen. Amen. You're a winner already. The rest is extra. All this is just extra, man. You got to believe that. Amen. Amen. Let's get rid of these little children. Oh, my goodness. They're probably thinking, this guy crazy. <laughs> Mama, this man is spitting and everything. Go on. Let's release the little children. Praise God. Y'all go ahead. Praise God. Go ahead. If you got more than one child, that's going to be $20 a head. Nah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Let's keep an eye on that AC because Brother Loop be breathing hard over here. Come on, bro. Keep that AC going. Me and Loopy on this side of the church by ourselves go. Everybody over there sweating. Where's all the air going? Throw a paper up in the air. It's going to come to me and Loopy over here. Praise God. Pray for her. Family, they need you. Amen. Let's get into this. Many members, but one God. Y'all were here last Sunday. Who was here last Sunday? Y'all were here last Sunday? I wasn't here last Sunday, right? So if you say, so you say, I was here last Sunday, and I say I wasn't here, you go, yes, you were. No, you weren't here then. Brother Mikey led the study. Let's give Brother Mikey a round of applause for what God did in his life. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. See that? See him? He's in the kitchen applauding himself. He's like, yeah, God worked good. No, he did a great job. He did a great job. I knew he would. I, I knew. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Wait, we got spirit. Yes, we do. <clears throat> I want to turn in my resignation papers today. God is ready and always willing to work in anyone who's a willing vessel. Amen. Amen. So Twin City Community Church, I can tell you just based on last Sunday and based on how the children's ministry is going and directed that we're growing. We're growing because when different people can teach and help lead the body of Christ, we're growing. Amen. It's not just one person. I'm the worship leader. I'm the teacher. I'm the children's pastor. I'm the counselor. Man, when everyone's growing and you fall into where God wants you to be, we're growing. God's moving in this place. Amen. God's moving. So he taught last Sunday on many members, but one body, uh, part 2.5 is basically what it was, right? Two and a half. So we're going to pick it up and get to part three and, uh, we're going to do whatever God wants us to do in his word. So we'll start off this morning since we're starting at about 1130. We got an hour of the word. Thank you all for coming early and eating and feeling comfortable and fellowshipping. That's what it's all about. That's what makes the difference. Instead of just staying home and watching it, being amongst your brothers and sisters, that makes a big difference. It's, think of it this way. And I'll have Brother Joe speak at the end of the service later. You know, think of it this way. Imagine if you had COVID and you were hospitalized. And weren't sure that you were ever going to leave. Wouldn't you be thinking in your head, oh God, how I wish I could be there on Thursday, Thursday night and fellowship with my brothers and sisters and hug them again and talk with them. And then come the weekend, you're thinking, oh God, how I wish I could be there this Sunday and see my sisters and brothers again and fellowship with them and joke with them and eat with them and plan things with them. Oh God, if you would just let me leave this hospital, I'd love to be with my brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. I know you would, because I would. I did. And I know Brother Joe did. I heard it all the time. I can't wait to get out. Amen. When God's moving in your life and God has been good to you, the least we can do 
is do what God wants us to do. And that's not forsake the assembling of the brothers together. Amen. 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 All right. Church service is over. Let's pick up an offering and go home. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Praise God. Many members, one body. If you'll turn with me to the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verse 8. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. The bad thing I forgot to take my Bible with, but it was like 9 o'clock when the ambulance came by. <laughs> That's another reason why you should study and read your word, so you could at least remember something while you're sitting in bed, amen? Definitely, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But if you got your phone, you were able to open it up and listen to stuff, right? Yeah. Amen? I take it you got it? Not call me at night time and, hey, I got a question. No, Brother Joe, go to sleep early, bro. I just dropped you off dinner and now you still want to talk? Come on, man. <laughs> Chapter 2, verse 8. <laughs> In verse 8, it says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. We are God's workmanship. If you believe in God, God begin to work on you like a potter works on clay and begins to shape and mold the clay into the exact image for the purpose that the potter has. The potter doesn't make a baseball bat shaped object if he wants something to drink out of that. Amen. He makes a cup. Does that make sense? God has put in each and every one of us a gift and he is attempting to shape and mold you into the right vessel, the right person, the right attitude in order for him to use you for what he created to use you for. Amen. Amen. You can't use a fork, right? If you're Latino, you can use a fork for what I'm going to say. You shouldn't be using a fork as a screwdriver, right? All the Hispanic mothers are like, I, I was doing it. I couldn't find a screwdriver. <laughs> Latina women will figure it out. Amen. Praise God. If they're trying to move something and all, if they're trying to move a couch and all they have is four tamales left, they're going to take those little wrappers off, eat the tamale, put the wrapper under the corner of the couch and slide that bad boy. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. They're going to figure it out. <laughs> they're going to figure it out. Yeah. And, you know, after you take them out from under the couch, you can wash them and use them for... No, we won't say that. That's all right. That's all right. Don't go too far. Amen. Don't go too far. But you get the point, right? You get the point. God is trying to mold you and I into who he created for you and I to be. He created me to be this guy. But there was a time when this guy, who was made to do this, was living and doing what this vessel, this person was not made and created to do for God. Amen. I was doing what I wanted to do. And therefore, when I was doing what I wanted to do, all the results that God didn't want were the results that were coming out of me. Amen. The bad choices, bad decisions, all of those things until I gave myself back to God and said, now make me into who you want me to be, because I'm seeing that I am not able to live this life the way I'm living it and able to live a life of joy and peace. Amen. And when God took me, began to reshape me into who he created me to be, since even before I was born, I began to feel joy. I began to feel like I was released and set free. I mean, I wasn't a bound or in bondage to anything anymore. The only thing I'm in bondage to now is to the Lord himself. Amen. Amen. Wherever he goes, I'm going to go. You know, some of y'all got children like that, right? Wherever you go, they're there. 18 years old. Still, What's up, mom? She's like, boy, get off me, boy. What? No, she's like this. Boy, get off me. 18 years old, still with mom. Everywhere. What was that? Where you going? No, hombre. That's who I am. Where, who over here? Who? Oh, no. We're not going to call him out. That's, don't do that. Don't be that. Come on. Because my mom would tell you I was 15 years old. Come on, mom. I need $2. Let's go. <laughs> <sighs> don't worry about it. It's so good. Don't worry about it. We're in the same boat. That means our mothers love us a lot and we love them a lot. That's all that means. Amen. That's all that means. Go with me to Romans chapter 12. This church always gets off track. Look at y'all. <laughs> Romans 12, verse 1 through 5. Therefore, I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God. Look, like begging. I'm urging you. Listen to me. I'm begging you. Pay close attention. 
I urge you by the mercies of God to present your bodies as a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. Everyone says, oh, I want to go to church and worship. Wait a second. You should be worshiping 24 hours a day. When you sleep, you worship. When you acknowledge that the reason you sleep is because God has given you peace to sleep. Amen. You're worshiping God by acknowledging that he has given you the peace. When you wake up, you worship God by waking up and saying, God, thank you for waking me up. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't wake up. So you're worshiping God knowing that he's the one who woke you up. Amen. And then go about the rest of your day. You should be worshiping. Worshiping God in the way you treat others, the way you treat yourself, and the way you acknowledge God in everything. If before you're going to do something you shouldn't do, you don't acknowledge God, you are not worshiping God. Amen? Amen. Man, worship goes beyond singing. True worship, Jesus said, is a changed life. Amen? Because when I do what pleases God, that is the greatest form of worship. Singing, get this right, singing is praise to God. Singing is praise. But I worship him by opening my heart, opening my mind, and raising my hands. That's worship. The rest coming out of my mouth is praise. You got that? Man, that's important to know. That's important to know. Now look at verse 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. Not everything we do is acceptable to God, is it? If you got to do it behind closed doors, you know very well it's not acceptable. If you got to keep it from the pastor and the people in the church where you go, you know it's not acceptable. Amen. If you got pictures of it and you don't post it, you know. <laughs> Anyway, anyway, just to let you know, um, I have twit face. You know that? I have twit face, which is a combination of Twitter and Facebook. You know what I'm talking about? Just want y'all to know I have it because you could always look around and see. You know what I'm talking about? You could always look around and see. Right? I'm on Facebook. People could always see what I'm saying or doing. You know what I'm talking about? Don't forget that you are always being watched. If it's, it's not going to be me, but you're going to be watched by your family and friends who hear you say, oh, girl, I'm a Christian. I'm a child of God. You know what I'm talking about? They're watching. Even your children are watching. You know what I mean? Even they're watching. Look at verse three. For through the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you not to think more highly of himself than he ought to think, but to think so as to have sound judgment as God has allotted to each a measure of faith. Not everybody has the same faith. Why? Because not everybody is in the word of God the same. The Bible teaches that faith comes by what? Hearing God's word or reading God's word, right? Or being taught God's word or teaching yourself God's word. That's how faith comes. If you're never in God's word, don't expect to have what? Faith. Exactly. And here it says, we're all given an allotted measure of faith. God will give you as much faith as you want, but it's all going to be determined on how much you're trying to get, how much you're reading. How much you're hearing. You got it? So if you want to have great faith to where when trouble comes, you're not like everyone else. You're freaking out like, what are we going to do? You remember that you're going to see a victory because the battle belongs to the Lord. The only way you can think that way every day, all day, no matter what's going down, is that you are in God's word. That's why many of the people, they were telling stories. The majority of the people that ran back into the buildings on 9-11 were believers in God. They had faith. Their mind wasn't even thinking about dying. They were thinking, who can I help now? Laying their lives down spiritually, amen? And then physically, ultimately. I know when trouble happens in our family, I don't freak out. I'm like, let's do this thing. Everybody get behind me or settle down, calm down. Get daddy something to drink so I don't freak out either. Come on. Give me something to drink. Let's do this thing. Verse 4. For just as we have many members in one body, and all the members do not have the same function. So we, say we, we, who are many, are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. We're members of one another, meaning Jesus is the head. He's the leader of us. And all of us are a part of his spiritual body. Some of us are the arms. Some of us are the feet. Some of us are the legs, the knees, the ears, the eyes. I'm his mouth. Of course, you can hear me talking all the time. So I'm always speaking on the Lord's behalf. Amen. But we're all members of one another. Remember this, that when you gave your life to Jesus Christ, you became a member of the body of Christ 
You no longer belong to yourselves. You belong to each other. You got it? So, oh my goodness, Pastor Christmas, he's calling me again. He says, then he's helping the church. Oh my God. You belong to us. We belong to you. I'm not trying to say, you know, tell your husband that we got first dibs on you. You know, that's not, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, is that you should always be spiritually ready to serve the kingdom of God at all times. Amen. Amen. Look, when a person enlists into the military, Especially if he's in the National Guard, he's chilling. We got clients here who are in the National Guard who bring their dogs to stay with us sometimes for two months. Why? They're at home chilling with their wives. They get a phone call. We need you to go over here to North Carolina. We need you there in three days. Get there now. Boom. They're rushing, calling. Hey, Chris, I got to bring my dog. Leave your dog. My dog, I'll probably be gone a month and a half. Does his wife have a say-so in it? He's enlisted in the military. Amen. But she doesn't mind the benefits because she lets him go because there's benefits. Dental, vision, everything else. When we and our spouses acknowledge that there's benefits of being a believer, they're ready for you to serve God. Go serve God. Why? What's the benefit? Answered prayer. The battle doesn't belong to us. It belongs to the Lord. When we need God, he comes through. He doesn't forsake his children. He doesn't give up on us. He's always ready to be there. Amen. That's a great benefit. You know what I'm talking about? Or you could be a person who doesn't really have a relationship with God. And then what's happening? You don't have a relationship with God, but you're praying. You're hoping God's listening. But when you know the Lord Jesus Christ and you're a child of God, you got confidence that you and him are one together. You're praying knowing he is listening. Amen. And he may not do exactly what you're saying, but he's going to do what needs to be done to fix that situation or problem. Amen. I pray with confidence. Sometimes I don't even pray to say, God, I know you're seeing what's going on. I'm leaving it up to you. Help my emotions not respond in a humanistic way. Call me down right now. Jesus, I don't have to get all these beads. There. Oh, God, if you're listening. Hallelujah. Mom, light the candle. Oh, Jesus. You know what I'm talking about? I don't got to do that. Why? Because God, the one I serve, he hears me. Amen. Amen. He hears me. And you know what the Bible teaches us? We'll get into later. He hears me even when I don't speak. He hears me. He hears on the inside when I'm moaning and groaning or I'm having a deep thought wondering how am I going to survive this day? Amen. He hears my every thought. Praise God. And here it says we're many members, a part of one body. We belong to each other. If you don't make yourself available for each other, you could be a, a ministry assistant to another mother. There are mothers sitting in here right now who are being served by other people who have decided to become members of the body by serving you, by taking your children and leading and teaching them. Amen. That's what it looks like. You know what I'm talking about? That's what it looks like. It sure does. You got people who brought food to serve you, to help nurture you. We don't know if there's going to be women who bring in little children who didn't eat last night. Well, praise God, there's some food there they could eat today. Amen. Amen. But if you are, and listen to me closely, if you are struggling or, and are in need, make sure you let us know. We, we're a part of each other. You ain't going down like that. What the enemy meant for evil, God's going to turn it for good. Why? Because as long as I believe in God, I'm going to serve God to serve you however he wants me to. Amen. Amen. Don't be forgetting all that stuff. Write this down. Write it down. Write it. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Write it down on your heart. Don't forget this. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. By the way, I just want to let y'all know I'm back from vacation. <laughs> Verse 12 and 13. For even as the body is one and yet has many members, and all the members of the body, though they are many, are one body, so also is Christ. Meaning, what makes Christ spiritually complete on the earth within his church is that all of us are in unity with, with each other. And here it says that we must be one with each other. Amen? That's an important verse there. Because even though there are different people, different mindsets, we are one. We should work as a team, right? Not everybody, not every, I got to say it again. Not everybody on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers was a quarterback. <laughs> but the blockers had to protect that weak dude. You know what I'm talking about? Lord knows if he had no blockers. But, oh, uh, uh. We all know, right? Brother Juan, tell the truth. But they won the Super Bowl, so it doesn't matter. But it took the blockers to help him, didn't it? He, he ain't 
ain't that good if he ain't got no blocking. It don't matter how good of a quarterback you are. If you don't have no one to block for you or a center who knows how to give you the ball just right, you don't matter on the field. It doesn't matter how good you are. Amen? It doesn't matter how good Michael Jordan was. If he didn't have no one else on his team to know when to pass him the ball, it didn't matter. You would never know how good he was. But because everyone else played their role, Michael Jordan was able to shine. You know what I'm talking about? And that's the way it is here. When you play your role, you, and when everyone helps you, everyone here shines for the Lord. Amen? Let your light so what? Shine. Amen. Let it shine. Look at verse 13. For by one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, we were all made to drink of one spirit. Meaning, if you drink of the true Holy Spirit, which was given to us after Jesus died and we believed in him, Jesus had a conversation, which we call a prayer with his father and said, when I give my life, I ask that you will fill them with the helper, the spirit, that they would not be orphans on the earth. And the father kept his promise when we believe. And when he did that there in verse 13, it says that all of us drink of that spirit, making us one. We became one again. You got to keep that in mind. One. If you're watching live, you're going to watch later in the future. Or if the rapture happens and I'm no longer here and you stumble across this video on YouTube or on Facebook, know this, that if you always stayed at home, never letting God through the Holy Spirit use you to be a blessing to the human people that are here in this body of this church or any other church that God is supporting. If you never got out of your house to help, you are be disobedient and have been disobedient to God all of your Christian so-called life. Amen? Amen. Because you were saved to serve. Amen. No one was ever saved to sit. You were saved to serve because when you were in the world without God, you weren't serving. You were self-serving, serving yourself, being selfish, right? Then when Jesus came into your life, you took over for him. He was doing all the works. Now he left, filled you with his power. Now you work for him. You pick up where he left off. Amen. Amen. And if you're not picking up where he left off, because you think it's okay to stay at home and never fellowship and be used by God as a member, then you are out of line. Or it could be that you're not even in line with God. Mm -mm -mm. Verse 27. Now you are Christ's body. And individually members of it. That's an important statement. I didn't understand the statement until I went to school, probably about the fifth year. Really looking into it, really trying to get deep into it. I figured it out because it hit me like a ton of bricks. That verse, now you are Christ's body and individually members of it. I understood now that everyone says that outside of the church, you can do your own thing as a Christian or whatever. Absolutely not. You wonder why a lot of the power of God doesn't work? When you're not being obedient to God, when you're alone out there doing your own thing, because God doesn't work through people who are lone rangers doing their own thing. Amen? Amen. It's not the way he works. The spirit of God, the gifts of God are for the people of God. They're not for the people in the world who don't want God. You hear what I'm saying? They're not for them. And here it said, you are Christ's body and individually members of it. That means if you're not playing your role, letting God use you in the church, being a part of the body of Christ, then you're not a part of his body. What does that mean? He wants to use you like a hand, an arm, an ear, an eye, a leg. But if you're not attached to the rest of us, you're not even a part of us. Amen. You are spiritually his body. When I said this before, when Jesus came to earth, he needed a physical body while he was on earth. When Jesus was crucified and was taken back into heaven to sit at the right hand of the father, he left his body on earth, not his physical body, but us, his spiritual body. He lives amongst us and moves amongst us. You're not going to go to Walmart and down aisle 13 go and find where mothers are teaching children the gospel of Jesus Christ. He's not moving over there. He'll move through you while you're there. Only if you're allowing God to move in your life and you're living an obedient life. But the service of God always happens here when weekly. You got what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Weekly. And then when you leave, the service of God should be working through you daily. Amen. And then you come back wanting to see how can I operate here? What do you want me to do here? Trust me, it's very satisfying to be around people who want to hear when you talk about the things of God. Because when you're out there, hardly no one wants to talk about the things of God. I can't wait for Thursdays and Sundays. You kidding me? 
I cannot wait. I mean, Brother Joe drives about over an hour to get here. We ain't paying him anything to come. He's coming because he can't wait to be around y'all. He likes seeing all y'all's faces. I know when he was struggling and could barely breathe, he could picture all of your faces even though he didn't know you. If you never fellowshiped and hung out with him outside of church, I'm sure he remembered your faces. Amen? Because I know I would. I remember a time when I felt like I was dying one time. I was a member of everybody. Even my enemies were like, oh, Lord, I don't want to remember that, dude. <laughs> Remembering everybody. <laughs> Colossians chapter 1, verse 18. Colossians 1, verse 18. It says, And Jesus, he is, he is also head of the body, the church. That means he rules you. He's your head. He's your governor. He's your leader. How? Through his word. And how? Through the leaders that he put in place. You know, someone once told us here at the church, we don't, we don't believe you got to call anyone a leader. And the Bible says everywhere in the New Testament, obey and submit to your church, what? Leaders. Isn't that crazy? And they said, we, don't use that word. That's, un, that's not ungodly. It's not right to use that word. I'm like, it's in the Bible. What are you talking about? When I was a little boy, when I, the times that I did go to church, I knew who the leaders were. I knew the past, some of the pastors, some of the deacons. You've got to know who your leaders are or else how are you going to follow? Right? That's crazy. Didn't make sense. Verse 18. Just read it one more time. And he is also the head of the body, the church. And he's the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he himself will come to have first place in everything. Everything where? In his body. He wants first place in you. Amen? If you belong to him, you should be a part of his body. And he wants to have first place. That means you put serving God first before everything else. You know how many times that the worldly things could separate the parents from staying in God's word? You know, there's some people that never go to church any time during the week and aren't able to be used by God because they're at every activity for their children. Their children are leading their lives. What are they growing in God? Never, right? The parent must take control and say, hey, I got to focus on God and then everything else follows. Amen? Look at verse 24. Verse 24 says, Now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake. And in my flesh, I do my share on behalf of his body, which is the church. So the body of Christ is what? Church. The church. Don't ever forget that. Don't ever forget that. The Bible is clear that the most important government on earth is the church. It's more important than the government that we have in the United States. It's more important than any prince or any ruler or principality on the planet. The church is the most important government on earth. Amen. And that's why you got to pray that the leaders in the church are following the word of God. Amen. You must pray that. Let's read that verse in 24. Now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake and in my flesh. I do my share. Everybody say my share. My share. I do my share on behalf of his body. He could have quit. He was writing this letter and other letters. He could have quit and said, forget that. They're putting me in prison just because I'm trying to tell y'all what God is telling me. I'm done with this already. I'm tired of getting in trouble and put in prison just because I'm helping you out. You want to hear from God? You go get on your knees and search for God. I'm tired of being arrested. I'm tired of being whipped. I'm tired of being beaten. I'm tired of starving. I'm tired of being shipwrecked. He could have said, I am tired. But you know what he said? I do my share in prison or even on shipwreck boats. I do my share. Why? Because it's his job to serve you. Even if it meant his freedom. Even if it meant his freedom. How many of you have given up anything to serve everyone else? If you're not there yet, then good. This series is for you. Amen? There are times I don't sleep because God says, I need you to hear what I'm saying. I'm like, but it's three in the morning. I got dogs coming at 730. I don't care. You listen to me until I'm done with you. And when 730 comes, I'll give you so much supernatural strength. It'll be as if you slept for nine hours. Amen, man. You know what I'm saying? That's a benefit of serving God. Yeah. You should never say, uh, I, I know I should read it, but I'm going to sleep. <laughs> and God's like, I've had a word for you. Because Thursday, today, Monday, 
You're going to get in a situation at work. There's going to be this and that. But since you weren't fellowshipping with me, I couldn't give you the strength needed. So Thursday is going to come and you're going to be as freaked out as the world. When if you would have listened to me on Monday and not shut me down, when Thursday came, you would have quickly remembered that what the enemy meant for evil, God turns it for good. You know what I'm saying? Amen. That's how important it is to be in tune with God constantly. Amen. Man, it's important. That was good. Yeah. It's important. That's real. When we truly believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, he saved us and baptized us into his body, the church. When we believe, when we all become believers of God and we accept that we deserve to die and Jesus didn't, when we accept that, but then understand why he had to and believe in that and accept his payment in our place, we become saved. And when we believe, the Holy Spirit makes us a part of the body of Christ, which is his church. Let me tell everyone who's watching live right now, I'm going to watch in the future. If you disrespect the church group or a church body that is truly living by the word of God, you're disrespecting Jesus Christ himself because the church is Christ. Amen. Amen. You got that? Yes, don't ever forget that. So you say, I don't need to go to church. Well, you know what you're saying? I don't need Jesus. I don't need what Jesus wants to show me through the teachers there. I don't need none of that. I got my own wisdom, my own insight, my own way of living, my own choices to follow, my own goals, my own dreams, me, my, my. Know what I'm talking about? I had to make that decision myself. Trust me, I had a pocket full of money and thinking, whoo wee, Kashada's only two and a half hours away. Mud alley across the tracks. Bro, I got it. I'm in between. I'm good. What should I do? Hmm. I had to make the decision. I choose Christ. It wasn't easy. I ain't gonna lie to you. It ain't ever easy to do the right thing. It ain't ever easy to, to follow God. Matter of fact, the hardest thing you'll ever do is to choose God. That's the hardest thing you'll ever do. Is to say, I want God. Why? Because as soon as you say that, you no longer belong to yourself. You give up all rights to live a selfish life from that moment on. That's a hard thing to do. Why do you think people don't want to get married? Why do you think they don't want to get married? They're together, but don't want to get married. Why? Because mm, if I marry him, mm, the Bible says he's the head of the house and that boy's a fool. I don't know. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? You hear me? That's the truth. You know, ooh, uh, she's beautiful and everything. Look at her. I love the way she talks. She's funny and everything. She gets her hair done, her nails done, everything. But my goodness, every time I've been there and woke up in the morning, that girl makes me eat cereal. She don't know how to cook for nothing. <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? You better check yourself. Oh, man. I got to decide. Mm, I rather take big girl with tortillas. Ah, yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? You better believe it. You better make wise decisions in this world. Or else every time I see you, be a Christian filled with spirit, but always be the prayer. What's up? Fruit Loops again? Yeah, Fruit Loops again. <laughs> Mexican got a pack, backpack full of Pop-Tarts like little kids going to school. That's his lunch. Oh, man. What'd you bring for lunch? Well, I thought I got tacos. What you got? Oh, man. That Mexican got one of the Lunchables again. Oh, man. All right. Enough for now. Let's go. When we believe, the Holy Spirit makes us a part of the body of Christ, his church. This is a recap. And for the last 25 minutes, let's push into the real part of part three so that way we can continue part four next week. I said... Two weeks ago, that finding your calling wasn't biblical. Remember that? Oh, I got some responses on that. What are you talking about? And I, I just asked, okay, well, did you find your calling? Uh, well, uh, sir, okay, because it's not in the Bible. Finding your calling isn't biblical. And I gave reasons why. But I said, the reason finding your calling isn't biblical, because God finds us and calls as many as would come. You got it? When God calls us, we become called by God. And when God calls me and you, he gives us an assignment. And all of our assignments are the same. You just do it a different way. You got it? That's what he says. You'll never find in the Bible where it says you have your calling. Unless it says your calling that was given to you is a general calling that God gave when he called everyone together. You got it? So don't be looking for that one special thing because that'll mess people up thinking, well, I'll do this at church or, or I don't want to be used at church unless I get to do this. Listen, you got to serve anywhere 
in the beginning, you got to start off somewhere showing your faithfulness to God before he trusts you to do the thing you really want to do, right? Because you got to learn to grow and be patient in doing the things you don't like. There were times, man, I get exhausted, but I helped out the church I was at playing the drums for years. I was like, I'm tired of this. This song number nine, and my arms can't take it. I had carpal tunnel and I was playing the drums. And I'd pray in the beginning before I played the drums, God, you got to strengthen my carpal tunnel. It's not really mine. I'm asking you to take it from me, heal me, do something. But this thing tears me up. On song number two, my wrists are swollen, my fingers are swollen. There were times even when I was playing the drums, but because I just wanted to serve. God any way he wanted me to. The drumstick after I hit the cymbal would fly in the air. Do y'all remember that? Who was over there at Pecan Grove with me when I was playing the drums over there and the drums flew out of my hand? The drumsticks. But that's how much I was going to serve. I had I had a bag of drumsticks right there. One flew out. Oh, oh, Jesus. Pull the other one out. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Serving anyway. You know, I was there. I, do, I wasn't in the mood to teach at the beginning. I didn't want to teach, but they saw that I had a gift of teaching. They put me in the classroom to teach the deacons and the pastor and his wife and everyone else who was in that group. And I taught them. I hadn't been there for a year. And they were like, take over this class, do this. And I was like, man, I don't know if I really want to do that right now. We just started coming. You know, I just want to do this. You know what I'm talking about? I just want to chill. But then I felt the Lord move me and say, just do whatever I need you to do. He ain't asking you. I'm asking you. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Pastor wants to be in the nursery again. No, it ain't pastor. Jesus needs you in there. If you're a part of Twin City, Jesus needs you in there. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So Loopy's going to be in the nursery next week. <laughs> <laughs> hey, shh, shh. no ifs, ands, buts about it, Loopy. <laughs> God finds us and calls as many as would come. Let's prove it. In Matthew chapter 22, verse 9. Matthew 22, verse 9 says, Go therefore to the main highways, and as many as you find there, invite. That word invite means call. Invite to the wedding feast. Look at verse, nine, verse 14. For many are called. Everybody say called. called. But few are what? Chosen. Few are chosen because God knows who's already going to think they're a part of him, but don't ever want to let him use them. You can't punk God. When you remember, I told you Thursday when you raise your hands or whenever someone raises their hands and say, God, I, 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 I want I don't want to go to hell. I want to go to heaven. God knows that you just want him just to go to heaven, but you don't want him because you want him to change your life. You deny his power in your life. Amen. So God knows that. So you think he saved you that day and gave you his Holy Spirit that is more precious than any jewel or gem or stone on the earth? Absolutely not. He didn't give you his spirit. Because he already knew in your heart you weren't going to let him use you. You got it? So you walked away and wonder, how come I said I wanted God? But it's been four months and I'm, I'm still beating my husband up and, and, and <laughs> banging the kids all around. When I'm in Walmart, I just smack them around. Why am I still like that? I'm not changing. Because God said that day you went like that, you weren't really serious with me. So you're still doing it on your own. If I was in you, you'd have went, boy, I'll mm -mm. Yeah, hands on you pray for you. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> That's the truth. Because if God really did save you and put his spirit in you, you do the opposite of what your flesh wants to do. Your flesh says, live this way and do this. It's okay. My, my life. My, okay, then you're right. It is your life. That's why you don't have God yet. Got it? If your life belonged to God, when that time or temptation came, you would say, hmm, uh-uh, I love Jesus more than I want to do that. You know what I mean? Because, you know what? Because when trouble comes, this person that I did this with, they ain't going to answer my prayer. When trouble comes, this person that I went, they ain't cover me or got my back the way Jesus will. So I'm not going to waste my walk with God on this person or that person or that thing. You know what I'm talking about? That thing will not help you in times of trouble. Romans chapter 10, verse 8. People that watch, watch us live or watch us later on down the road, they're probably thinking, man, listen to all them people saying amen. That dude crazy and they're all following him. What's going on? We're following God's word, my friend. We're following God's word. Verse 8. But what does the Bible say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we are preaching that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved for within the heart 
A person believes resulting in righteousness and with the mouth he confesses resulting in salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes in him will not be disappointed. Verse 12. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek for the same Lord is Lord of all, abounding in riches for all who call on him. You got that? So this tells you and should tell you that God will treat you the same way he treats me. You got that? If you confess him as your Lord and Savior. Verse number 13. For whoever, say whoever. whoever. For whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. Now guess what? If God loved you enough to save you, you should love him enough to serve him. Amen. You hear that? I'll say it one more time. If God loved you enough to save you, then you should love him enough to serve him. Man, think of it. Who do you always want to help out or to give back to? Those who never help you out? Those who are never there for you? No. When you wake up and you've been blessed or there's some good things going on, you're going to make some enchiladas or it's going down in your house, who do you reach first? Those who what? Who have been there for you. Those who have been good to you and your children, right? That's the ones you think of, right? That's the way it should be with God. God's always been there for us. We should always think of how can we bless him back. Amen. Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. Last verse on this topic or that subject or that point. Matthew 28, 19. You should all know this one by heart. In verse 19, it says, Go therefore, brother Juan, and make disciples of all nations, even your enemies, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. What is he telling you to do? Go, therefore. You want to know how God calls everybody? When he saved you, he uses you to go and invite everyone else. You got it? So if you don't have a desire to invite your girlfriend or your boyfriend or your neighbor or a close you know, relative, then more than likely you're disobeying God by not going, therefore. And if you're not going, therefore, which is the beginning, if you want to be honest, going, therefore, that's the basic first step. Of a new Christian because when I first gave my life to the Lord and got saved the first thing I wanted to do was tell somebody about it you got it so if you really have a relationship with Jesus Christ you should be wanting to go and tell somebody about it you got it so God calls people through who you so if look around now this is a test this is a, this is a test to the emergency broadcast system <laughs> this is a test we're gonna see who's gonna pass it you don't have to do what I tell you to do but if it's a principle of the word of God, consider what I'm about to say. Look around you and think, who have I gone into the world, therefore, and drawn to come here with me to church? If there's no one next to you, you're not going, therefore. You're either ashamed of Christ, you're ashamed of me, the pastor, or you're ashamed of this church. But one thing is going on, you ain't doing what God told you to do. This is a test. Church is a test. You, you think that all tests are easy? They're absolutely not easy. I guarantee you, before you came to this church, I passed the test by reaching out to you. You got what I'm saying? I called all of you, text all of you. Why? I got to lead by example. If I can invite so many people to the extent to where I'm, I'm a little nervous because you don't want to invade people's privacy to some extreme. But because I know that you could die tomorrow and not be right with God, guess what I do? I got to get out of my comfort zone and say, listen, you need to hear what I got to tell you. You need to come and start getting God's word. God wants to grow you. You know what I'm talking about? And guess what? Look around you. I've spoken to every one of you individually. I don't hesitate. So if you've been here for five months or more and there are people in here you haven't fellowship with, you're in your comfort zone and you need to get back into Christ. Amen. Yes. Can you say amen? amen? You know what I'm talking about? This is a test. This is serious business. This is, a, this is how you prove it. You know what some people will do after a, a sermon like this is taught or the test is given? Instead of letting God use them and serving God, doing the biblical thing, guess what they're going to do? Not come back. Why? Because they're not ready yet. You got know what I'm saying? I thought you were ready when you raised your hands and gave your life to Jesus Christ. I belong to you, Jesus. Use me and do me what you want to, Jesus, except from Monday through Sunday. Well, what other day do you give them? You know what I'm talking about? You hear what I'm saying? 
Is this too hard? Y'all gonna see this dude's always just working us. You know what I'm talking about? Every time we go to church on Sunday, he's just working us, right? He should go on vacation for three months. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> <laughs> You know what I'm talking about? Oh, y'all the one say amen on the vacation? I <laughs> They say you soft, Mikey. That's right. Say Pastor Chris, Mikey soft. No. Y'all know Mikey ain't soft. Y'all heard it. Point number three that I gave was that Jesus gives gifts to the members of his body to be used in his body, which is the church. Every gift you have, if you do have one, is not for you and not for your friends out in the world. That gift is for us in here. Yeah. If you leave here and go to another church, then that gift is for them over there. It's not for you, no matter where you are. You got it? Amen. Your gift is from God for others. And if you're not letting God use you, that is going to be the reason. That's the check engine light. When you are coming to church, but you feel like you're not accomplishing anything. I've been going for weeks and months and man, I just don't feel like something, something's missing. Yeah, you, you're not in the game. You're missing. When you don't let God use you, you'll feel like something's missing because that is God letting you know that the check engine light is on. He's done his part to save you. Where are you going to let him do his part in you to use you the way he wants to use you? Mm -hmm. So if you're not being used, you're going to start feeling uncomfortable. I don't know, man. We've been going. We don't feel like anything's happening. You're right because you ain't happening. You know what I'm talking about? You can make sense. That's like being married to somebody, you know, you're doing all the work and the other one ain't doing nothing. You're like, come on, man, get in the game. You know what I'm talking about? Get the trash, take it out, cook. You know how to cook, cook, do something. Ladies, just to let y'all know, we got a brother who cooks. No, anyway, uh, he's got some good gifts, amen. Look, good gifts. Y'all hear what I'm talking about? The gifts that are in you are not for you, they're for everyone in here. You might have a gift of comfort, and there's a sister in here who may lose her husband, may lose a child, or may lose a family member. That gift that God gave you is not for you. You shouldn't be at home. When you found out that that happened, you should immediately take in that gift to her. Amen. You got it? Mm-hmm. So how come when I ran out of gas coming from Matagorda, nobody took me $20? Yeah, right. <laughs> Use that gift for the pastor. No. You get it? Yeah. Jokes make you remember. They helped me remember. Jesus gives gifts to the members of his body to be used in his body, which is his church. If you stay at home, never become a part of a local church body. Your gift will never be used and you will become like on the inside. Your spirit will begin to rot. You'll, you'll, you'll be a Christian, but you'll be bitter. You'll be frustrated. You won't be a happy Christian at all. Why? Because the reward of joy, the reward of peace, the reward of kindness, the reward of comfort that comes from God. That's a benefit only if you let him use you. If you don't let him use you, you don't deserve none of that from God. Amen. Amen. Like I said before, you don't deserve a paycheck. If you don't go to work, to work, right? So you don't deserve answered prayer if you're not letting God serve you. Let me tell you that. Once again, Facebook, you don't deserve answered prayer if you don't allow God to use you. So if I know and others know that you don't let God use you, you're all about your own self, you're all about your own life and about your selfish own ambitions, why on Facebook will you ask me to pray for you? Because my prayer is going to do nothing because you ain't doing nothing. That make sense? Hmm. And I'm always, always saying everything I say based on experience. I know I've prayed, God, help me. <laughs> help me, Lord. <laughs> oh, Jesus, I want you to help. I got that bill coming. He's like, I helped you. I gave you $1,000, and you took 500 of it and smoked it away. And now you want me to miraculously just sprinkle it from heaven. Oh, God, help me, God. You know what I'm talking about? Or he'll say, I helped you with the money you needed for the house and the lights and everything else. And everything I helped you do to get that money, you ended up at the machinas. You know what I'm talking about? Now y'all starting to go, girl, I told you. Girl. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's the truth. He gave you what you needed. You messed it up. Remember the peace he gave you when you first came to him? You lost it when you didn't let him use you. Man. Ephesians, I don't even know how we got to Ephesians. We're still there. Ephesians chapter 4. Let's go there. We're almost done. We're almost done. Ephesians chapter 4. Verse 1 through 8. Therefore, I, the prisoner of the Lord, implore you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling which you have been called. You see, the only calling in the Bible is that God has called you. 
to do what? Go therefore into all the world. How you do it, who knows? Why? When a company is going to build the building, that company has a calling. What is the calling? To build the building. But not everyone who's building the building is a framer. Not everyone is a plumber. Not everyone's an electrician, but it takes all of them to build the building. Does that make sense? And here it says, I implore you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling with which you have been called. Look what he says to do in verse 2. With all humility and gentleness, with patience, showing tolerance for one another. Many of you may say, I ain't going to be in there with that girl's children. That girl's kids, she don't discipline them at home. They drive me crazy in children's class. I'm sorry. I ain't help. Be tolerant, the Bible said. You got it? Some of you mothers are like, mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know, because that girl's kids are, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Verse 3, being diligent to preserve the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Keep the unity. Stop looking for the little small problems with one another. Keep the unity. Keep the peace. Keep your mouth shut. You got it? If you got a problem, go to them personally. Don't talk behind their back. Don't destroy your relationship. Don't, especially, remember this, for those of you who are watching who have done this before, don't leave a church starting trouble because you started trouble with Jesus Christ himself. Amen? Be careful what you do. Because the church is Christ. <laughs> That's a revelation everybody needs to get. <laughs> I don't need to go to church. Really? So you want to be a part of Christ then? Because that's where he's moving. Well, I am the church. You're only the church if you're a part of the church. You got it? So don't steal that from Jesus. Verse 3, 4. There is one body and one spirit, just as also you were called in the hope of your what? Calling. What is your calling? Your calling. That's why I said it's unbiblical. There is one calling, and it's God's calling of everyone who wants to come, right? And once he calls you and you accept his call, you are now sent to go and serve. What did Uncle Sam do when the military had to be gathered and there was a war, World War I, World War II, Vietnam War, Korean War, all of these wars, what happened? Uncle Sam said, we want you. You know what? And what happened? They were what? Calling everyone. But all the, all the guys and the women had to decide if they wanted to answer that what? That call. Now, when all of them all over the world or all over the United States answered that call, they all went to go do the same thing, which was what? Fight a what? But you were going to fight it how? Different. You know, the guys who are on the ships, the guys who are on the, in the platoons and on, on, the, on the campuses where the military bases are, those guys who were in the kitchen cooking for the soldiers, they were doing just as much battle as the soldiers on the field. Why? Because without the food, those soldiers ain't got no strength. You got it? Everyone's needed everywhere. Next verse. There's one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and father of all who is over all and through all and in all. Why did it say that? Because it needs you to know that everything is the same at a church in Richmond is the same as a church in China. All the rules to being a Christian that's mature is the same one way, one way, one way, one way. All churches should be doing the same thing, right? You just do a little different. Some people reach the community by giving backpacks. Others by giving turkeys. Others by just going and being a blessing. Others, you know, by buying medications and helping out with medical things. It doesn't matter, but you're serving God. You know what I mean? Next verse, 7. But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore... It says, when he ascended on high, he led captive a host of captives, and he gave gifts to men. Notice, who did he give the gifts to? Men. But pay close attention to this. He gave gifts to men. Notice this. When he gave gifts to men, it says that he took those men first captive. The note says, when Jesus was resurrected... When Jesus was resurrected, he gained a victory over death, hell, the grave, Satan, and sinful man. Jesus took us captive and gave us over as slaves to his body, the church. You were a slave and captive of Satan and of the ruler of darkness and of the world. Jesus set you free, not just so that you'd be free on your own, but so that you'd be free to now serve him. You got it? Because here's one thing you're going to know. No matter whether you believe in God or not, you belong to somebody. You either belong to God or you belong to the devil, whether you know it or not. 
Jesus set you free from the devil, the least you can do is serve God. You know what I'm talking about? That's one thing y'all gonna remember if I pass away early or young. Y'all gonna remember I always say, you got it? You know what I'm talking about? And whenever you hear a preacher preach, you're going to think, I got that. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> so remember, you were given as a gift to this church or whatever church you become a part of. We're almost there. Finish it up with what Mike was talking about last Sunday in chapter 4, verse 11, same chapter. It says, and Jesus gave some gifts as apostles, some as prophets, and some as evangelists, and some as pastors and teachers. You notice those gifts that he, he gave? He gave whole Persons, he gave men to you. Some men are called pastors. Some men are called teachers. Some men are called evangelists. Notice that a pastor doesn't pastor himself. A teacher doesn't teach himself. An evangelist doesn't evangelize himself. An apostle doesn't apostolate himself. And a prophet doesn't prophesy to himself. Who does he teach? Who does he pastor? Who does he evangelize? Who does he prophesy? You. You got it? His gift is for you. He doesn't stand at home and look in the mirror and say, Chris, I prophesy to you in the name. You're going to grow by tomorrow. <laughs> he doesn't do that. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't do that. Not at all. Next verse. Verse 12. Why did he give them? For the equipping of the saints, for the work of service, to the building up of the body of Christ. Until when? Until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a mature man, to the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. As a result, we are no longer to be children tossed here and there by waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, by craftiness and deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in all aspects, into him who is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body being fitted and held together by what every joint, say every joint. You're one of the joints. You got it? You are what's holding this church together when you let God use you here. And then it says, it says what every joint supplies according to the proper working of each individual part causes the growth of the body for the building up of itself in love. That's why when Mikey and Brenda, which we're going to announce next Sunday, don't forget, that's Potluck Sunday next Sunday, but Mikey and Brenda have basically taken over the children's ministry. You got it? And now Mikey is used by God to help me appear teaching the Word of God. You got it? Is he going to do it all the time? He'll do it when God wants him to do it. I'm sure he'll be available. Amen? Amen. I'm sure. But notice here that it says that we must speak to each other and not allow each other to be taken by every wind of doctrine. Let me just tell you right now, for those of you who are watching live again, we're going to watch in the future. You need to know this. If you're watching Robert Breaker, he's a false teacher, and you need to know that today. Amen? Why am I telling you that? Because he just told me right here to let you know, don't follow every wind of doctrine. Robert Breaker is a false teacher, and many people don't even know it. Some people watch him on Sundays. Some people watch him throughout the week. He's a false teacher. He's become popular, but people don't really know about him. Amen? And I need to let you know that right now, because in the past, I already let you know about other teachers. So I need to let you know that now. All right? There are many teachers that are false. In the future, during one of the weekly Bible studies we do, I'll point them all out so that way everyone knows clearly. You got it? Because I know at least a hundred and something people in the Rosemary Richmond area who listen to Robert Breaker and don't know of his false teachings. You need to know that. You got it? Okay. Look at Romans chapter 11, verse 29. Two more locations and we're done for the day. Okay. Romans chapter 11, verse 29. Because I want you to remember everything we talked about. I don't want to overwhelm you. Verse 29. Just to let you know right now, next week we're going to talk after church for a little bit. Uh, we're going to talk about, God willing, about your gift. What do you think your gift, how is God using you, or how does God want to use you? So I'm looking around. If I see you here today on Sunday, don't disappear on me next week. You got it? Come and find out. If you disappear and don't come, you really don't want to know. You don't want to find out how God wants to use you. You got it? You know what I'm talking about? I'm going to be here next Sunday. <laughs> I guess I don't have a choice, right? <laughs> Some of y'all may not be here because there's something else going down, but, you know, try to be here. It's really important because we need to know 
how you can be used in the body of Christ if you're going to remain a part of this body of Christ. Amen? Amen. Romans chapter 11, verse 29 says, um, For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Meaning, when God put the gift that He put in you, He's not going to take it away from you. But He will discourage you if you don't let Him use it through you because you don't belong to yourself. You belong to Him. Amen? So that's why once you became saved and he put the Holy Spirit in you, when the Holy Spirit filled you, he had those gifts that Jesus gave through him to be in you. They're in there. Right? They're in there. But one of the reasons God doesn't ever use his gifts through you is because of disobedience. Disobedience is what prevents God from using you the way he wants to use you. Amen? That's, that's the main thing. The last passage 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 2. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 2. But let me, let me start at verse 1. I'm sorry. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual men, but as to men of the flesh, as to infants in Christ. I gave you milk to drink, not solid food, for you are not yet able to receive it. Indeed, even now, you are not able. And verse 3 says, For you are still fleshly. For since there is jealousy and strife among you, are you not fleshly and are you not walking like mere men? What's the point here? The point is, do not be that person that Paul is talking to. Because this letter is to anyone who has ears to hear what the Spirit is saying. And the Spirit said that through him. What did he say? That there's some people who are here, maybe here, I hope not. But there's some people who are here who, even though you're here, you're not ready to really give your life to God the way God wants you to give your life to him. You're not ready to be used by God in the way God is requiring of you to let him use you. So when I speak or when I teach or anyone else teaches or speaks, even if you're in the car jamming to KSBJ and singing, you know, faith will rise as we wait upon the Lord. The Lord's like, don't be singing as we wait upon the Lord, girl. I'm waiting on you. You know what I'm talking about? You can be singing, jamming to that, but not letting God serve through you. Therefore, that song to God is just noise. Doesn't mean anything to God. You hear what I'm saying? It may make you feel good. Means nothing to God. And everyone always says, well, that's not right. I mean, God, isn't he? God cares more about your obedience than anything else. So if you're not serving God, everything else we do means what? Nothing. The scripture's all over the place to tell us that. So just know that. Don't be that, that, don't be that person that Paul's talking about to where every time you hear teaching or anything, you just hear it and don't do nothing with it. Therefore, he says that you're just like a baby then still. You always, no matter what I tell you, you don't even listen. You don't obey, right? You know, how many times you get little children, you tell them over and over, what did I tell you already? And what do they say? They, they disobey, they ignore you and everything else, right? Are y'all good? Y'all sure? Y'all wake over in the corner? Hello, hello, hello. Everybody else all right? All right. So know this, that we're supposed to have a baptism, but there are some people who had covid who want us, if we can wait for them, not this Saturday, but the following Saturday to do baptisms, okay? So that's two Saturdays from now, but um, we will next Sunday have the potluck, okay? Next Sunday, potluck. I'll announce it again on Thursday. Next Thursday, I'll announce it. And for the ladies, don't forget about the women's ministry. If you don't have that book, ask for it. If you have it, read it. Make sure you're in the fellowship with the other sisters who need you too, right? Okay? They had a fellowship this Saturday. It was four women. We'll talk about it off camera. Let's pray for the men's and women's ministry and this body of Christ and all the churches that are faithfully serving God. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word, how your word is so sharp and cuts us all up, Lord God. But like a fillet knife, it removes all that is not of you. It removes all of our own selfish ways, our selfish thoughts, our selfish desires, our selfish plans, Lord God, our selfish dreams. It removes all of our selfish motives, Lord. Allow your word to be even sharper 
Lord God, than it is and has been. That everything that prevents us from being more and more like your son, Jesus Christ, that it would be removed for your name's sake, for your glory, Lord, that we would learn to live for you and not for ourselves. If there's anyone here who doesn't know you, I pray that within their way, within themselves, with their heart and with their mouth, they would cry out to you and repent from not obeying you and from following you and from seeking you, but that they would learn Lord God, that you gave your son to die for them, that upon believing in him, knowing that they should have died instead, but that his good and righteous life paid the price for them, that he died and rose again from the grave in order to prove that there's life everlasting. We believe, they believe in you. We thank you for everything you're doing, for everything you've done. May everyone begin and learn to fully, committedly rely upon you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. amen. God bless you all. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we're good.